Creating software required millions of investments only to come to a realization that your first version of the product is not a market fit. That doesn't necessarily have to be the case. With the tools like Webflow, Wise, Xano, and many others, you're able to create no-code SaaS tools in like months instead of years, go ahead and test them on the market, see is anybody interested in actually using them, and then only then decide, do you want to scale on the no-code SaaS area, which is totally doable, or to create a fully fledged custom solution. So that's why in this video, I'll be showcasing what is our internal process when we create SaaS products by leveraging Webflow for our clients and our sort of SaaS that we created uh, in-house at our studio, which is powering our whole business. So what is actually SaaS? And like the easiest way is like basically having some sort of human doing something for you, but instead of that, you have a SaaS, which is automated and it does it for you much better. So based off of that, as there are many more and more digital businesses, I only see more and more SaaS tools getting online. And where I see kind of the most amount of benefits is actually the niche SaaS tools, because there are a lot of these kind of conglomerates, like these incredibly big SaaS tools, which do everything. But I see more bigger and bigger push for tools, which are super simple, which are created for a specific area. And when people are using these SaaS tools, they can leverage 100% of the SaaS tools and not get lost. Some of them include on our site, Clockify, Toggle, and many other, which are pretty simple and are like, are just trying to cater for a single case. And they're not trying to be the every uh, everyone's tools uh, and that's why I, uh, like analysts believe that uh, basically the SaaS market is going to be growing 20 percent per year and i think that like the investment sizes are, are around 600 billion and basically with time it seems an, like a no-brainer you can have 20,000 visitors paying you 20 uh, 20 bucks per month and based off of that you can earn a lot but also you can contribute your time and your focus to a single platform, to a single tool and continue growing it and creating the best possible outcome. But that's usually not uh, kind of how all the SaaS tools go. Like we've had some SaaS tools internally kind of failing, but more on that later on. So let's go ahead and see kind of what is going to be the process to create a no-code SaaS. The first step is going to be actually finding uh, a topic you actually know a lot of stuff about. So uh, at our studio, we created a six-star platform, which is an in-house project management tool for agencies, which is currently used only by our studio, but later on we were planning, planning to launch that across the market. And because we know all of the pinpoints of how it is when we are working with clients, how it is when we're receiving feedback, how it is as an agency to be integrated into five different project management platforms from your clients. And because of that, we create a tool which is gonna be resolving all of that, combining all of that together, and also adding Clockify, which is gonna be our time tracking tool directly to the platform so that our clients can see uh, kind of how much hours we're using and basically just automate the whole process, which was taking a lot of time out of our project managers, account managers, finance teams, et cetera, et cetera. So don't be fooled by um, like a lot of these YouTube videos when you're scrolling to kind of Instagram where they're gonna say that anybody can build a tool. I think, yes, anybody can actually build it, but you need a really specific industry expertise in order to build a SaaS tool, which actually anyone is gonna be using. So that's why it's great that you, uh, first you maybe run an agency, maybe you see some sort of a marketing SaaS tool or uh, maybe a business SaaS tool or, or, or maybe a proposal tool or anything like that, which you can build by knowing what are the problems in the industry and how can you make them 10 times better. After that, you're just gonna be going uh, over and documenting uh, like a short discovery workshop, which we have uh, a link down below for you to download completely for free to be able to to identify kind of why is anybody going to use your startup uh, like or, or your SaaS tool, what they're going to be using it for, which are going to be your core features, which are going to be your smart goals for the first variant of that. And just making sure that you have everything documented and that you don't wander off into the distance itself. Uh, because I know from my perspective, when, uh, when we started creating our own project management platform, Everybody started giving ideas. We want idea for this, 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 and this. Uh, and then basically the roadmap become bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And that's what you don't want to. You want to launch an MVP version of the SaaS tool as soon as possible, see if there is a market fit, and only then uh, invest huge amounts of money. So because of that, creating a shared document and going through a discovery process is gonna allow you to do that much better. Afterwards, you can go ahead and jump onto the marketing side. Just because I think, okay, yeah, if you do create a great SaaS tool, like you can get funding and maybe go through that process to go ahead and market it. But at our own studio, we also are kind of slowly launching our venture capital studio, where we're gonna, we're gonna be going into some investments on our own, uh, into our own products. I usually like to bootstrap everything kind of from the ground up. And in order to bootstrap anything, you actually need to know how to market the tools because when you unlock sales and marketing, you can basically sell anything. I mean, kinda, I think Elon Musk recently sold a deodorant or a perfume or something like that in 30,000 copies 
in a day, like basically making millions out of a perfume, which smells terrible. But when you do know how to market and sell, you can basically create an, any size product you want to. So it's like in our process, when creating or investing in any kind of ventures, we always create a landing page. We maybe even add a, a landing when it's a live feature so that you can start working on your marketing campaign as you're working on your product. And you actually understand, is there gonna be any traction for something like this? Is this actually worth the investment? After that, you're gonna go ahead and jump into the creating of the platform. We usually like to start with Figma and you can see like our six star app for client management. It is a big Figma file. So we have a style guide, which has everything documented like a real product. Uh, we have a kind of the, the, the redesigned version of the application, which we're implementing currently. And there's a lot of moving pieces, a lot of states, and everything is thought of in detail. And I really think that it's better to create something unique and something that is gonna be keeping your users, specifically in this day and age where there are more and more SaaS products that you should be investing into creating a really good user flow and kind of and just think about everything in Figma. So that's why we're starting our working Figma and then documenting everything completely. After that, we jump into Webflow. We develop the front end completely on Webflow. And if you don't know anything about Webflow, Webflow is basically a visual development tool which is gonna help you build all the front end for the platform, add interactions, and just have a simple CMS from where you're gonna be able to manage some of the things if the platform needs some, some sort of management on that front. Plus, you're gonna be able to use Webflow to basically set up uh, your landing page. So you're just gonna be running your business from a single platform as a core. On top of that, we're using WISE to basically connect Webflow. We're using WISE uh, as a mid middleware between all of our other third-party providers. So you can view more on their YouTube videos and kind of more on their platform, et cetera, et cetera, kind of from their documentation because they have great documentations because this video is not necessarily gonna explain what it is. But uh, from what we found, like there are other alternatives like member stack and many more, but uh, WISE is gonna give you all of the flexibility you actually need to create something custom and something scalable that's gonna scale past 1,000, 10,000, 100,000 users. So that's why we decided actually to switch from other platforms we've, we've been using and switch to WISE uh, to use that uh, for our SaaS building process. Then we're gonna be using Xano for the backend just because as user, users are, are gonna be scaling, you're gonna have a lot of databases, you're gonna have a lot of things you need to showcase on the on the front end. That's why we're using Xano for the back end and hosting all of our data there and then basically using Xano connected to Wiz and then Wiz connected to Webflow to go ahead and create the whole flow of everything. And then like the, the most important part, I mean, for us is like, okay, you have the front end, you have a piece that connect uh, kind of the back end to the front end. And now it's, okay, how am I, with which data am I gonna be filling in the back end? And in our case, we decided, okay, let's go ahead and integrate with Clockify because they have an open API and we're gonna be able to use the client's hours and then showcase them on the front end pretty easily by leveraging Xano and then by leveraging Wiz. So based off of that, you're gonna be able to either write custom APIs, which are gonna be proprietary for your application. Maybe you can even leverage AI and like kind of create uh, some things and interactions on the website with AI and like get onto the trend of everybody having an AI uh, application. But based off of this, like the sky is gonna be the limit. So you're gonna be able to create almost anything. You're gonna be able to add any of the APIs that any of the other platforms are using because in the end, any of the SaaS tools, like even Facebook, they're using a third party provider for authentication. They're using a third party provider for something else. And you can just get those APIs and basically connect all of those uh, into a single tool and create your own SaaS tool with uh, little to no code. Like you might start coding a little bit uh, in, in the process, but like 90% of the things are gonna be no code with a little bit of a bigger learning curve. And then after the SaaS tool is done, you're gonna be probably having some internal testings and you can go ahead and go live. So in the process of you actually building this SaaS tool, you hopefully create the landing page. So let's say you have thousand uh, email lists of people being uh, kind of interested for that. You're gonna be able to use that and launch this SaaS tool actually to production and basically start gathering actual users who are gonna be using the application and then having a continuous cycle of marketing your SaaS and getting more leads. So I do feel that like more and more businesses are gonna create specific SaaS tools and that the industry is gonna be growing and growing and growing and growing. But on the other hand, it's also gonna be more competitive. So whoever creates a SaaS tool the fastest and gets, I, I like the book positioning a lot, uh, is kind of whoever kind of goes out to the market first in a specific niche or a specific industry uh, is probably going to be a leader in the long run as people are going to be used to it. So that's why it's pretty important that 
by leveraging no code tools like webflow like I, I like to call them more visual development tools you're going to be able to go to market much faster generate leads much faster and then decide do you want to get funding and you can even get funding by uh, like with no code tools themselves so if you would like us to showcase our six star application a lot more in depth and how we actually built it you can go ahead and leave a comment down below and like the video and follow our channel by clicking the subscribe button down below as we publish content every single week.